Despite living in a pretty built up uh, inner suburb of a major city, we do occasionally have some interesting animal sightings. Uh, specifically geese that on the busy four lane street near my house often cause traffic jams in the summer by just wandering across the road and just kind of sitting there and pooping. However, this is the first time that I've encountered a turkey in the road and I'm a little disappointed that it didn't gobble at me. As I was thinking about this uh, unusual encounter today, it got me thinking about visibility as a cyclist. Mm. I was traveling pretty fast down a curvy stretch of road that I ride specifically because there are hardly any cars. It's a stretch where I can zone out and just coast downhill nice and fast. It's the perfect place to ride. Then I got to thinking, you know, this is what we as car drivers also tend to do. We get in our giant medical metal vehicles, we assume we're safe and protected by them, and we drive down the road without a care in the world. And that's precisely the kind of mentality that leads to cyclists and other vulnerable road users getting hit. The argument I most often hear in an accident like that is, oh, I didn't see you. Meaning, I didn't expect a bicycle on the road and I wasn't looking for one, and probably I was also looking at my phone or deep in some sort of conversation. People also say, well, velomobiles are very low to the ground and that makes them hard to see. In fact, I've heard that quite a bit after posting my accident video. Well, you know what else is low to the ground? A turkey. In fact, the turkey is the color of the pavement. And yet neither the SUV ahead of me on the road, not shown in the video, nor myself, ran into the turkey despite both of us moving fairly fast down a curvy road. I've also been back past that space, uh, that spot on the road, uh, a couple of times since I met the turkey, and I didn't see any turkey roadkill, which tells me that no one ran into the turkey, probably because we were actually watching the road. So this begs the question of what can we do to get the attention of drivers that aren't focused on actually driving? Choosing a bright color for your velomobile definitely helps. Lighter colors like white show up well at night. Bright colors like red, orange, fluorescent yellow, bright blue and green all show up well during the day. And in fact, before choosing the colors uh, for my bulk and the W9 that I have on order to replace the Quest, I did a lot of watching of the cars on the road to see which ones caught my attention the quickest, and it was always the brighter colors. I also opted uh, with the bulk for an orange race hood and an orange service hatch cover to help with visibility against snowbanks in the winter. Uh, the W9 that I have on order and will be getting at the end of May and doing a whole bunch of videos about soon is all red specifically because I'll be riding it a lot in the winter and I want that bright color to help contrast with the snow. So assuming the driver is actually looking in your direction, which is never a safe assumption, the fact that you're riding a very unusual looking vehicle can be helpful in getting their attention. I can't tell you how many times drivers have slowed down or even just plain stopped in the middle of the road to stare at me. I prefer that they did that rather than zooming past because at least they're less likely to hit me. I also have been very pleased with the light module on top of the head bump uh, that I ordered with the bulk. It helps to get bright blink blinking lights closer to driver eye level. Uh, some people also opt to go with a flag or a light whip. I also run a Phoenix T3 F-E-N-I-E-X blinking red light that's attached to the top of the tail with some dual lock. This light is incredibly bright and visible from a long ways away. Uh, in fact, I've had police officers that pulled up to say hello to me as I was riding that mentioned that they could see that light from quite a ways away. I always ride with my headlight on at full power during the day to help with front visibility and I will be mounting uh, sometime this week uh, a spare headlight that I have up in the front of the light module and I'll be wiring that up to uh, uh, go with the blinking function for the lights in the rear of that module as well. So that helps with the drivers that might actually look in your direction but what about the ones that aren't looking at you and should be? This is what your horn is for. In fact I had an incident today with a driver that pulled out and was about to hit me and several cars behind me 
Um, but I laid on the horn and they instantly hit their brakes, which thankfully spared them a very expensive insurance settlement and me having to ask Jan at Velomobile World to build me another bulk. Uh, of course, then right after that, as you can see in the video, they proceeded to pull out right in front of the car behind me. I've had this happen a few times and I've found each time that the horn is actually loud enough to get the attention of drivers. It also helps that they are used to hearing horns uh, from other cars telling them that, hey, you might want to stop. But what about the driver that's so zoned out and maybe focused on their phone that they blow through, let's say, a stop sign and cross the road at 30 miles an hour so quickly that you don't see them coming. Say, for instance, the driver in the accident video that I posted. In that situation, uh, unfortunately, my view of the driver was blocked by the snowbank. He didn't have his lights on despite the dark skies. He was driving a dark vehicle that blended into the dark building behind him, uh, all of which made it very difficult for me to see him. I was also watching the driver, the rider behind me because I was leading a test ride. I was watching the road in front because I knew there was a pothole coming up uh, that had I hit it would have bent my steering rods. And um, you know, a number of people have argued that he couldn't see me because of the color of my Velomobile because there's some white on the side despite the fact that the part that he would see would be the all red, bright red nose with the bright blinking light. And so, um, and that of course, in the fact that I'm very low to the ground. I have visited that intersection since then. In fact, just a couple days later, after a few warm days, and I took a photo of the intersection and I noticed later in the photo that a pickup truck had driven past. I didn't notice it until I looked at the photo because you see the snowbank was the height of the pickup. So all of you that are arguing, well, had I been on a road bike, I would have been more visible. Sorry, but a road bike is not higher than a pickup truck. And not only was there a snowbank, but there also was a large curved brick sign uh, to the right that blocked a lot of the view of the road, along with a stand of trees. On the left side is a large condo building that would have viewed, uh, blocked his view to the left. The driver did not intentionally blow through the stop sign. The driver had mentioned afterwards that he was on his way to a blood bank. He was from the south end of the metro, and the road that he came from is a dead-end road. It doesn't go to anything except a couple hotels, and he wasn't living far enough away that he would have stayed in a hotel overnight. I believe that the driver was lost. That is the only car I have ever seen all winter at that intersection. In fact, the reason I was riding there with the uh, test rider was because there's maybe one or two cars that I see there in the course of a 30 to 60 minute ride through that section. It is the lowest traffic, safest place I could think of to ride. And it just so happened that it was not my lucky day. And I'm pretty sure that the guy was watching his GPS trying to figure out where he was going and just did not notice that he had entered an intersection. Unfortunately, these situations can happen to anyone on the road, no matter what kind of vehicle you're driving. I've been rear-ended three times in my car. I had a Scion XB, which is quite a high vehicle. Um, I've been sideswiped once. I've been hit at an intersection. Uh, I've been hit a couple times as a passenger in a vehicle, and fortunately, I've only had the one serious accident uh, in a bicycle. Now, a few people have argued, well, you know, if you'd been on a road bike, you would have been more visible. We've addressed that because of the height of the snowbank. I don't think it would have made any difference. In fact, I think if I'd been in a car, I would have been hit too. Had I been on a road bike instead of in the Velomobile, I, at the speed the driver was going, I would have been thrown from the bike. Him hitting me may have broken my leg. Um, I'm sure I would have gotten serious head and neck injuries, probably broken arms, um, broken hands. That's assuming, of course, that I actually lived through the experience, which I have some doubts about. However, in the Velomobile, all I got were some scrapes and bruises and a little bit of whiplash. That's what the Quest 
which has actually pretty old safety technology. That bike is uh, 11 years old. May it rest in peace. The pieces, actually. The newer models like the Bulk and the Alpha 9 series have all sorts of really interesting new safety features. In fact, I think I would have been less injured had I been in the Bulk because the Bulk has underneath the uh, cockpit rim, it now has shoulder pads and a flat area so that it spreads out the impact. And the Alpha 9 has a rounded inner edge that does the same kind of thing. The back of the cockpit is designed to be fairly narrow so that it holds you in place so that if you get hit uh, from, say, behind, you won't go flying forward. There are also a nice thick head pad behind your, your head. In fact, most Velomobile models have that. The bulk has the thickest one of all, and that uh, serves the same kind of function as a headrest in a car to help prevent whiplash. Uh, in my case, of course, I, I got slammed to the side, and that's kind of what I think um, threw my neck to the side. And there's not a lot that would have helped with that, um, aside from the fact that it would have helped if my homemade race hood had not gone flying off. In fact, it's possible with the bulk race hood being as narrow as it is, that um, that may have actually reduced any sort of head and neck injuries, because of course I was wearing a helmet, and that would have kind of kept my head in place a little bit. So that's an interesting thought. Um, the Alpha series uh, actually has a fiberglass front hood instead of carbon fiber that acts as sort of a crash zone. And the bulk has a special design with the front boom that allows it to separate in such a way that it won't shift uh, back towards the rider if you get hit uh, from the front end. A road bike has none of these features. It's just your body versus the car. And having now been hit um, by a car at such a violent speed, I don't think I could ever again feel safe riding a road bike or recumbent on the road. I, th I think I would have to just stick with, um, with bike paths because there's just nothing between you and that vehicle. Now, I recognize that everybody has different approaches to riding safe. Um, whether that be your choice of color, you know, a specific color, the amount of lights, the placement of the lights, your route choice, your flags, whatever that is. This is what I've concluded for me is the safest in a Velomobile to have this combination of colors, this position of the lightings, uh, of the lighting features, and then of course just trying to be as careful and defensive a driver as I can and err on the side of caution, especially with horn usage and you may have a different approach and I think it's important that we all do what makes us feel safest when we ride and that's going to be a completely individual decision and I recognize also that there are situations like my accident that just are out of our control and in these kind of situations I am so thankful for the safety features of my Velomobile. If it weren't for the Quest I don't think I would be able to ride a bike again. All of that said I have one final thing to say, and that's a request. I want you to talk to the vehicle drivers in your life about what it's like to be a vulnerable road user. It's easy to get in a car and not think about the potential danger that you as a driver can be to others on a road. It's not until you've experienced the vulnerability of being a cyclist or a pedestrian that you realize how dangerous a car really is. And and how uncomfortable it feels to be passed closely or to have somebody pull out when really they don't have the right of way in the road. And that's why I've been sharing these videos, especially with the people that I know, with the students that I work with, with their families, and I hope that you will do the same. Social media is so powerful and I'd like to see us as a cycling community take advantage of it to help educate drivers on the importance of being a focused driver. And I know from comments that some of my students have made that it has made a difference in, in their view of driving. I rode down this morning that same road where I saw the turkey and I still don't see any dead turkeys on the roadside, so I suspect it lived to gobble another day. Even low unusual items, the color of pavement, can be visible to a focused driver. Please be that focused driver.